Hi everyone, my name is Rose Nessler and uh, I'm a sculptor and video based artist working uh, in New York City. And I have been teaching with New York City Crit Club for several years now. Um, I think this will be my fifth class with them. And um, I'm extremely excited to be um, working with New York City Crit Club to launch and lead um, this new intensive program, the Canopy program. Um, and so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about um, what my class will be like and a little bit about my work. So just to begin, um, I, um, like I said, I've been teaching with Crit Club for a few years. Um, in addition to that, I am also a part-time faculty at the new school um, with Parsons School of Design. Um, I also teach at CUNY, um, College of Staten Island, and I've also taught at Brooklyn College and Montclair State University. Um, before I was a professor, I worked for 15 years as a teaching artist, um, teaching with um, nonprofit organizations in the New York City public schools. Um, and that was uh, K through 12 education. So I have been uh, an educator for um, most of my adult life um, and have a passion for teaching. So um, the class that I'm leading through the Canopy program um, will start off in late February um, and we will have a nine week spring semester. During that semester, you will have the opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one critique with myself, as well as two peer um, critiques. So, um, in addition to that, um, we will also have um, two, uh, maybe three visitors. Um, we will have visiting artist, um, Lisa Mexen, who is a full-time professor at Cornell. Um, and she is also a terrific artist, mixed media, uh, sculpture, painting, and installation based um, artist. And um, I will, I'm really looking forward um, to having her join our class. Um, she also is co-founder um, of Ortega y Gasset Projects and Gallery here in um, Brooklyn. So um, she will be joining our class in uh, the spring to talk about her work and her research um, and her practice. Um, and then addition, in addition to Lisa, we will also have the artist um, Amanda Nedham join our class um, and she will be um, doing a kind of more experimental lecture um, and writing activity with everyone. And um, finally, we'll have an art history lecture um, that focuses on um, costuming, performance, um, and masquerade. Um, and Isabella Se Segalovich will be giving that lecture. Um, and um, Isabella is um, a writer for Hyperallergic, um, an art historian. And um, I'm really excited to have all of those people join our class in the spring. Um, and then I will sort of in the spring give you more personalized assignments, um, if you will, or prompts for your studio and for work. Um, and you should think of the first semester as a time where you either dig into a body of work you have been working on in your studio previously to this class, or you embark on a new body of work that you will continue with and carry throughout the whole year um, in our class. Um, and I, you know, in the spring, we'll give you um, assignments and prompts um, for this body of work. Um, and that the, the hope is that you continue to work with those questions um, and assignments throughout the course of the year. Um, the spring is also a time to set um, your artistic and professional goals for yourself for this year um, and kind of, you know, write down what you what it is that you want to accomplish, what it is that you want to get out of this program um, so that we can check back in with that during the fall semester. And so um, after the spring, which is a nine week um, course, uh, we will have the summer course, which is an intensive uh, six week uh, three week course, uh, six classes. And um, it's really pretty unique because um, we will have three visiting artists over the summer. 
and they will be giving lectures about their work, but they will also be meeting with small group uh, kind of pods of five people um, to critique um, their work. So you'll get a chance to interact with each artist one-on-one. Um, -on -one. um, and so um, the artists that we'll be having over the summer are Grace Lee Lawrence, um, Rachel Yoon, and Alana Harris-Babu. So um, I'm really looking forward to having them join our class. And then finally in the fall semester, um, we it, the fall semester is really, it's another nine week course, um, really focused on um, professional development um, and, and kind of like checking back in with what the body of work you've been creating over the course of the year, um, the assignments and prompts that I've given you, um, research that you've looked into throughout this course, um, and, and kind of checking back in with that and then um, and and also applying to residencies, um, uh, open calls, grant opportunities that will be part of the, the fall semester as well. Um, and so because of that, we will have um, three different visitors. We'll have Will Hutnick, who is um, a residency director um, an artist liaison, I believe, um, at Wasaic Projects, um, which is a residency program um, in Wasaic, New York, upstate. Um, and Will will be going over kind of um, residency applications and professional practices when applying um, for opportunities. Um, and then we will also have two gallery directors um, who will come and um, you'll get to have critiques with them. Um, and we will have um, one director who is TBA, so stay tuned for that. And we will also um, have Celine Mo, who is um, director and partner at Dinner Gallery in here in Chelsea, New York. Um, so I'm I am beyond excited to have all of those people come in the fall and get to see uh, and critique your work. Um, and then um, you know at the kind of the prize at the end of the fall semester is that we will get to have an in-person exhibition um, where you submit one piece um, and I will be installing it. Uh, if you know you can't make it um, to the show, um, if you are out of the United States or in another state. Um, and that exhibition will be at Ortega y Gasset Projects uh, in Brooklyn, New York. So, um, I'm just going to share my screen and show you a few images of my own work, um, and that that will be it. Um, so I'm beginning here with um, a piece that I made in grad school, actually. Um, and, you know, that's something that I like to talk about with my students, too, whether you've been through grad school um, or you're wondering if it's for you. Um, I am very open to discussing that. Um, so this is a piece that I made for my grad school thesis um, called Stone Age Toolkit, and um, I'm including it here because it's an example of the ways that I work with both, both time-based medium media of um, video, um, as well as different sculptural materials um, that don't always go together, um, such as fabric um, and stone. So um, these carved stone uh, paleolithic tools um, and a soft velvet uh, tool case that I made for them. Um, the video consists of um, a home shopping network um, spoof where I try and sell the tools. Um, so um, that's just to kind of give you an idea of some of the things that I've been thinking about for, for a while now. Um, here's a piece from 2020 um, called Tool Bag. And um, for this piece, I was really inspired by an essay that Ursula K. Le Guin wrote called The uh, Carrier Bag Theory of Fiction. Um, and it's actually about fiction. But um, it was inspiring to me as an artist um, because um, the idea is that the the bag is was really the first tool um, in human evolution um, before the, you know the knife or the sword or the poker um, the thing made to kill 
Um, it was the bag uh, invented to collect and to hold. Um, and, you know, Le Guin also talks about the, the, the bag being also um, a container, being um, the home, um, and ultimately a book, um, which in her case, she's talking about fiction. So um, I was really inspired by that idea um, and started to think of, of bags. And I've made a lot of bag pieces um, and kind of thought of all the different types of bags there are and how they're gendered um, and, and thought of the ways that I could flip material and form um, to really talk um, about each bag and its meaning um, and its gendered stereotypes. Um, so for the, for example, this bag is the pattern for me was modeled after um, a Carhartt tool bag. Um, but then, you know, instead of making it in, you know, canvas, um, I wanted to find a material that would be, that would feel really um, luxurious um, and then kind of almost like inaccessible, um, feminine, but also sort of menacing and um, reptilian. So I chose this uh, green leather that is stamped to look like um, snake skin. And, um, you know, the, the tools really here are soft tools that I've made. Um, and they sort of act as as like uh, fill-ins. They're almost like ghost tools um, on the outside of the bag rather than inside. Uh, and the tools were a way for me to signify that this is in fact a tool bag, um, but to also, you know, for a viewer to have that confusion of why are there tools on this like really fancy, um, luxurious snakeskin bag, this doesn't, you know, make sense. Um, and then, you know, the, the, the bags that I make often have, um, they're anthropomorphized. So for example, this tool bag has legs um, and the legs come from um, my, they're a pattern that I use over and over again, actually for all, all of the bags and other sculptural works that I've made. Um, I use the same leg pretty much over and over again. Um, and it's a, it's like a stocking pattern, um, but it also to me is like a Barbie doll leg, um, this impossible um, sexualized, like kind of model feminine leg um, that is, you know, like Barbie kind of like a stock in a, in a high heel foot. Um, so, you know, and then the, and kind of then mixing it's it, this sculpture's pedestal, um, you know, cr creating this stool for the bag that's really nothing else can sit on the stool but the bag. Um, you know, its legs go through holes at the top of the stool. Um, yeah, and so I guess just like kind of this is an example of how I really merge a lot of different materials um, together. Um, and I, I think something that's important for me that I'm constantly also interrogating with my students is, you know, how how do how do the materials you use um, marry together with the forms that you're making? And also the the context of what it is that you are trying to talk about or getting at or want to say with your work. Um, so I'm not going to go on for too much longer. Um, you know, here's another tool bag. I'm sort of questioning my work. Look, can I use the same pattern again? Um, how does that change when I change the materials? Um, how does that change when I change like the pedestal um, or table that it sits on? Another. A uh, bag, a flight bag, a ballet bag, a clutch, um, and here, kind of coming back, you know, I started with that first image of the uh, Stone Age toolkit and those carved um, soapstone and alabaster Paleolithic tools that I made. Um, sort of going, this was a, a return to the marriage of stone and fabric in my work, um, and just like really um enjoying that um that feeling of those two materials together like silk and stone um and I made so I made this stone dildo um that this clutch is holding um you know 
Birkin bags, <laughs> um, you know, thinking about like the, the first, um, you know, the first Birkin bag was actually intended to be a baby bag um, for the actress Jane Birkin, um, who was a new mom. Um, and I just, when I learned that, I thought that that, that was so hilarious um, that this like commodified um, bag, you know, that it's so iconic, so inflated in the price tag. Um, this, you know, this symbol was all like, was initially a, a baby bag. Um, and, you know, just like thinking about, you know, I just, that says so much to me. So um, having these um, cast glass baby bottles and cup holders that you might see on like a stroller, but it's on this um, plexiglass uh, pedestal that again, it's a pedestal, but it's, it's specifically meant for these these bags they it has holes that all the legs um sit inside and i'm going to just uh breeze through a little bit but just gives you some ideas um i work a lot with leather creating these um leather flowers um and kind of connecting you know leaving bags and connecting to other objects um such as paintings can i recreate a painting as a sculpture um, and um, what does that mean? Here's an example of sometimes how I think through my process. This is a mood board that I created in um, 2020, 2021 um, uh, for a video work that I was making for my solo show in London at the time that was about um, bar fitness and um, athletic, kind of like athletic culture of bar. Um, so this is something that I put together prior to making the video to send to the dancers um, and choreographers that I was collaborating with. Here's um, in some installation photos um, of that um, video work up at the gallery in London. Another installation view. And um, I'm actually going to end here because I want to respect everyone's time. Um, so I hope you have gotten, you know, a little bit of an idea about the class that I'll be teaching, um, about my work, um, about my ideas, about, um, making sculpture, um, and video-based, um, pieces. And I really look forward to viewing your applications, um, and teaching this class. It's going to be really special. I can't iterate that, um, enough. I, uh, so I, I hope to see you and meet you um, in a few weeks. Thank you for watching and for listening. Bye.